How good to see you've returned from hell. I'm sure you shall pass through it one day. Hello, welcome again to my channel. This is Slanted Glasses. Today I'm going to review a movie that I just watched. I was late uh, watching this movie and I was struck by how impressive it was made. It is called The Favorite. Um, it's a 2018 movie uh, directed by Yorgos Lafimos. I hope I didn't butcher his name. It is set in 18th century England, at the court of England, at the time of Queen Anne, played by uh, Olivia Colman. Dearest Queen, you are mad, giving me a palace. It is a monstrous extravagance. Mrs. Molly, we are at war. We won! Oh, it is not over. We must continue. Oh! It is about the struggles of two women to become the Queen's favorite. These two women are um, Sarah Churchill, played by Rachel Wise, and uh, uh, Abigail Masham, played by Emma Stone. I apologize for my appearance. I hoped I might be employed here by you. What impresses me so much about this movie is how they balance drama and comedy. The comedic part came from uh, witty dialogue and uh, the circumstances or the contrast between what the character said and what happened on screen. I think that's really uh, skillfully made and it's very impressive. And also, if you have this great story, great comedic tone, etc., it won't be really um, useful if you don't have people with great acting abilities. Emma Stone, Olivia Coleman, and Rachel Wise did their parts perfectly. They they just steal the show. Both, not both. The three of them is what makes this movie comes together. Especially, I'm really impressed with Olivia Colman because I don't really um, familiar with her movies, but she can convey this picture of a queen which is sometimes bumbling, but sometimes very sympathetic. And when she has to be the queen, um, she looks really uh, grand and, and commanding without any changes of her character. So it was really impressive acting wise, uh, writing wise. Stop it, I, you mock me. If I were a man, I would ravish you. <laughs> you have become close to Abigail. She is a viper. Then I want to talk about a very creative cam camera work which I think is very uh, unique because they use uh, many many white white shots I think with fish eye lens so it's very wide and it encompasses um, the room. They were all staring weren't they? I can tell even if I can't see and I heard the word fat fat and ugly. No one but me would dare and I did not. She's been stalked by tragedy. Everyone leaves me. Sometimes the characters are so small in this uh, room because everything is, is clearly shown but the characters are just there and there and there are also um, sweeping camera which is not blurry so we we get to see all of the details of the wide, wide um, rooms, wide hallways. We get to feel how lonely the characters are in the settings. And it, it is really impressive. I, um, I never saw anything done like that. I never saw Maybe I saw it, but now I'm more realized of that and, and I think I kind of know why they, they 
choose to have that kind of camera work. It's to convey loneliness. I apologize for my appearance. I hoped I might be employed here by you as something. A monster for the children to play with, perhaps. Ah. Is the music and the sound design. At the, um, at the trailer, you can hear um, this um, pulsing um, uh, strings, notes that uh, really felt like a building um, heartbeat. Sometimes it is hard to remember whether you have loaded the pellet or not. I must take control of my circumstance. Throw! I'm on my side. Always. The favor is a breeze that shifts direction all the time. Then in an instant, you're back sleeping with a bunch of scabrous whores. Well, we can hear that kind of score every time the uh, every time the, the the scenes seems to want to convey some tension, and uh, it, it's really haunting sometimes. So it's really weird. It's a comedic movie. It's also very dramatic, uh, but it's also really haunting. And I think everything was well balanced because of the music. Sometimes also. The sound of uh, of the next scene is already come in uh, come in scenes that uh, happened before the uh, the scene which the sounds will happen. If that makes sense, so they they really try to convey so much true visual and true music or true uh, the dialogue without really um, communicate the theme which is I kind of like when filmmakers does that because they really trust that we can uh, understand or at least felt what they want to convey. You just look at me. And then I want to <clears throat> talk about the costume design. It is really cool. And from what I gathered, the costume of the court uh, court people that they shown there is not historically accurate. But they use the silhouettes. Um, they use the basic silhouettes of the dresses or the, the costume and change the uh, colors. Why? Because, well, uh, from what I know, 18th century uh, fashion, court fashion is really colorful. There are many, um, you know, uh, ornaments and really uh, bright colors, vivid colors. You can see also that in, um, in the paintings of the characters in real life, they, they use reds and etc. etc. But they use um, uh, freedom to uh, make all the court uh, dresses or clothing in black and white because it matches the floor, the tile floor of the palace. So what they're trying to do is to make the characters a part of the palace and also present inside the palace. It's, it's brilliant, I think. Sometimes, if you do not go, I will start kicking you. And I will not stop. Um, what I gather from this movie is the, the theme of power struggles and to what end that uh, people need, uh, what, what actually people, why actually people uh, really want power, at what end, and after you have that power, then what? Uh, the movie doesn't portray one character as bad and one character as good. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we, we, we just given the whole picture if 
you have this kind of goal and you have power what happened to you but it's also you are privileged to have some goals and some people who is not privileged are looking for safety but when they get get that safety that power they don't know what to do with it it's it's really strong message about uh, what happened in the world right now although um, not in your face but I really felt that at the end of the movie I feel really um, I feel really sad in a way because the movie doesn't conclude anything uh, the movie doesn't have a particular um, extreme message about what's right and what's wrong they uh, it, they just showing you these condition that is still happening in our modern world and it's shitty so it end in a shitty way and uh, they use the the historical setting uh, just as a um, vehicle to convey this message and also it's 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 really nice to to watch the movie because it's beautiful basically so yeah um, my conclusion is I really like this movie uh, s some of the uh, some of the scenes are sticking with me and I think and think about it and I really want to rewatch it again just to enjoy the the acting the music and everything oh um, also I noticed that the director used um, type of lighting like Stanley's, Stanley's Kubrick's uh, Barry Lyndon which is also a period drama he uses natural light most of the time and if there's a night scene at the court with candles he only uses candles as the as the lighting to convey the feeling of the period uh, drama so many of the scenes look like this beautiful tableau of the period it looks like the paintings of the period and um, for me that liking those kind of uh, classical art that's really a treat for my eyes so I really um, I really recommend this movie I give it 8 out of 10 uh, because I'm overall impressed by everything thank you for watching my video and uh, I'll see you again in another review on, or another video of mine slanted glasses out